The map zoom effect can take just a normal, boring looking map and turn it into an extraordinary zoom effect, fast in DaVinci Resolve, all that coming up. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification to be updated on the newest DaVinci Resolve tutorials put out. So if you want to follow along, every file I use in this video is in the description. It's linked to my Google Drive. Go ahead, download it completely free. All right, so the first step for this whole process right here is to get your map pictures. So we're going to go to Google Earth and I'm going to use a free software called Gaiaz to take a few images of my screen. So you see here we have the names, we have pictures, we have stuff like that. I don't want that on there. Go over here, you're gonna go map style, and then just go to clean. It's gonna make our image look clean and nice. So now that we have that done, we wanna remove all of this stuff. Well, you can't really do that because that's like the navigation. Another way to get around it is to go to your zoom and just zoom out all the way. So now this is a lot smaller, easier to crop out. So for this map zoom, I wanna zoom in on central part. So it's right here in the middle of my screen. Make sure that whatever you're zooming in on is in the middle of your screen. And then I'm gonna do a screen capture. Now I'm gonna zoom in a little more. I'm gonna keep the same perspective though because you don't want to warp perspectives by like moving it around like this or anything. Try to keep it in the center. You wanna have it the same flat perspective as the first one. Once again, take a screenshot of it and then zoom in even more for your third one. Screenshot. And just keep redoing this process, continuing to zoom in until you get to your desired zoom length. So now we're in the edit tab in DaVinci Resolve and we're just gonna do a few things before we jump right into Fusion. So you see we have our browser right here. We don't wanna see that, we just wanna see the image. So click on your first one right here, go to cropping and just crop left, right. So you wanna cover up this little section right here because this is where the navigation bar was. Then you crop the top down and the same thing with the bottom and then zoom in. So it looks like a full image. Now what you wanna do is you wanna copy right here and highlight the rest of these and hit Alt V. Alt V pastes all the attributes. You wanna paste all video attributes. So that's gonna paste your cropping and your zooms so you don't have to go and do everything individually. It's just a lot faster. Now that we did that, just grab everything and start dragging them on top of one another. Your first picture, the one that's zoomed out is gonna be on the bottom. And then the one that's closest in, I zoomed all the way in, this one, is gonna be on the top. Now I wanna give myself a little room to work with, so I'm gonna highlight everything and I'm just gonna drag it out probably another three seconds or so. So we're gonna have an eight second clip. So now we have everything the way that we want it, just highlight it, go into right click and do new fusion clip. So here's the fusion comp, now into fusion. So now we're in the fusion tab. The first thing that I always do in any fusion composition is I arrange my tools to the grid and then I go to options and go to orthogonal pipes. This aligns everything to the grid and makes everything 90 degree angles. So it's a lot easier to follow and it just looks nicer. So put media two in your left viewer. Next we have to add in transform nodes for all of these right here. So click on media two and then go to our transform node and then add that in and just do that for every single node aside for the first one. Then for every merge node right here, you're gonna click on it and you're gonna go to blend. Make it blend about 50% so you can see both images through it. So do that for every single merge node right here. And now we have to add one more transform node. We're gonna grab it and drag it out and we're actually gonna disconnect this first merge node from the second one. So just click on this line and it'll go away and grab the output of the first merge node right here and drag it to the transform node. Then put this transform node in your right view. So now we're seeing everything that the transform node is seeing and it looks like a mess because you have two images overlaying each other, both at 50% opacity. So to make this effect, we're gonna be using a technique called photo stitching. So in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna overlay the same image ultimately because it's Central Park, but just zoomed in more and more and more. So what we're gonna do is under our media two, we're going to grab the size and we're gonna drag it down and we're gonna align it with this. So now this is the reason why we have this second transform node that we're using as a viewer. Grab this transform node and zoom it in and you're still gonna keep the same quality. So now we can arrange everything without it being grainy. Now make sure you're not on this node when you start moving things around because it'll move both of your images. You wanna be on this transform right in the middle. So for this, we need to make this a little bigger and you see what we're doing is we're just lining everything up. So once you get your image lined up pretty well, you're gonna go to your merge one 
and you're gonna go to your blend and bring it all the way back up. So now you see that you have these like really hard edges, which are super ugly. So to take care of that, we're gonna use a rectangle mask and feather the edges. So on the hot bar, just grab it and drag it to your media two and connect it to the alpha output. So in the left viewer, we're seeing the image when the mask is applied to it. And in the right view, we're seeing what it actually looks like. So click on your mask and then go to soft edges. And you can see that it softens the edges all around. So really that there is no hard edges. Just play around with the mask a little to see what looks best for your image. And now we're gonna do the same thing, just moving down to the next node. Disconnect this transform right here, move it down. You're gonna reconnect this merge one disconnect the merge two right here and then just bring it back into the transform now we're going to do the same thing for the media three first we're going to go to our middle transform node right here and we're just going to bring the size down a lot to line this up we're going to use this transform node and you're going to bring the size up to where you can actually align this perfectly so here's a little tip if you want to see the differences between the images whether you know you have to make one image bigger or one image smaller or rotate it. If you just want to see the differences between them, click on the merge node right here and use the blend. So now you can see the difference right here. So if you turn blend down 0%, you have your original image. This is the image that's through media two. Now, if you go all the way to right, this is the image that you're actually trying to line up. So you can see the differences right here. So because of that, I can make adjustments according to what looks right. So once you get the image where you want it, you're just gonna do the same stuff. You're gonna create a rectangle mask to take care of any hard edges you have here. You're gonna soften the edges up a little. So once you have that all set, you're just gonna go to your merge two. You're gonna jack your blend right back up to one. So now this image is overlaying perfectly with everything else. And we're gonna continue on with this process all the way down to the last one. So we're gonna move to merge three and we're gonna do the exact same stuff. But this time we're gonna run into some issues because you see here in our transform node that it's already maxed out. So the best way I found around this is to actually add another transform node and use that one for a viewer. So now you have two transform nodes and you can zoom in even more. And if you have to add another transform node, go ahead, add another transform node. So for this fourth image, just do the same stuff. Shrink it down, align it, and now I'm just gonna add a rectangle node so I can soften the edges up make it a little nicer, expand the mask if I need to, so I have a little more to work with. And then in your merge three, just jack the blend up. So now it looks like it's all one image. And now we're just gonna move on to the final image. So drag your transforms down, reattach the merges together, grab this output, put it into your transform, and then this is gonna go into our left viewer. So this right here is our final image. Now in this middle transform, we're just gonna bring it down even more to where it's lined up, drag it where it needs to be. I have my image pretty well done. Now this right here is a little off and I don't like that because it actually will turn into like a pretty hard edge. I wanna adjust this just a little more, but because I made this image so small, just one increment down like is like substantially less. It doesn't line up right. So, what I'm gonna do for that is I'm gonna click on my transform four right here and I'm just gonna add in one more transform node. Now this new one that I adjust, it's gonna be able to just make all these little fine adjustments how I like it. So I'll just bring this up just a little and it's gonna line up perfectly the way I want it. That looks pretty good. And if you're doing a bigger project that has more images like this, you can keep adding transform nodes here so you can get those really nice close edges. So click on the merge node right here, bring your blend all the way up again. And then like we did before, it's to grab your rectangle, make a mask. All right, so let's just run through what we have so far. It's nice quality all the way in. You have so much detail right there. So now all of the hard work is done. So we're gonna add one more transform node to the end. And we're just gonna add it in right here with this other transform. We're gonna view it through there and now we can zoom in even more into our image, which is just even better. So then I'm gonna add my pivot point to whatever I wanna zoom in on. So for me, I wanna zoom in on this road part right here. And now you see that I'm zooming in and out from that section right there. And now I'm gonna go to frame five. Now I'm gonna zoom out until I fit the image. And then under frame five, I'm gonna add a keyframe. 
And then let's say under frame 35, I'm just gonna zoom in all the way to where I want it. So I think that's pretty good right there. So now if we go back, we can see that it zooms in, but clearly we have a problem. I don't wanna be able to see this transparency here. I'm actually gonna go to frame 35 and I'm gonna add a keyframe under pivot. And then I'm gonna go to frame five, the beginning, and I'm just gonna bring it over to about five. That's exactly where I want it, five. So now as I'm zooming in, it's gonna move in exactly where I want it. So the final thing we're gonna do for this effect to bring it to a new level is to click on spline and just make and zoom this out, make it bigger. So now make sure that size is checked and hit zoom to fit, highlight all of these nodes, hit F, and it creates curves right here. So now we can just adjust how fast we want our zoom to be. So with that subtle curve, it makes things nicer, but I really don't like this like waving right here. You see how it zooms in right here and then starts to move over. I want that to be way earlier. So I'm gonna grab the handle right here. So this bottom one right here is the pivot. I'm just gonna grab the handle and drag it way back. I'm gonna move the keyframe over a little. So grab on the keyframe and just hold shift, then move it back like this. Adjust the curve to whatever you like it. And for this right here, I don't want it to be so drastic. I want it to be smoother. I'm just gonna create a curve right here. You can see that it gradually comes in. It's not like a sharp drop off just like this, like that. This is just gonna stop. I don't want it to stop there. I want it to ease in a little. And then once you're out of the spline tab, the last thing we're gonna do is click on this last transform node, the one that you're viewing through right here and go to your settings and then click motion blur and then drag the quality up. We want this whole thing to have motion blur. It's gonna look so much better. Motion blur is gonna hide any imperfections and it's just gonna add to the zoom effect. All right, so take a look at this. So there you have it, the map zoom effect in DaVinci Resolve. If you have any suggestions for future videos, put them in the comments below. I also wanna just say thank you guys for two thousand subscribers this is like a dream come true like i'm just blown away that two thousand people subscribed thank you so much you guys are awesome so in celebration of this next video i'm going to be giving away some copies of my new davinci resolve social media lower thirds pack to some of you guys so stay tuned for that super excited about it so as usual the video on top is all about 10 simple tricks to master davinci resolve fusion check that out some good freaking stuff in there and the video on the bottom is a video that youtube thinks that you would like but until the next one peace